Last week, I took some kind of time to prepare for the upcoming season of Advent, which begin next Sunday, by the way, just saying. And very honestly, as much as I love American politics, there were a part of me that was relieved of not having to preach a sermon for last Sunday. Like almost everyone on this planet, except maybe in Russia, I was shocked by the result and the fact that Donald Trump will be president of the United States of America. Well, that was another part of me that felt that I should have been with my congregation on the following Sunday and try to, to be there with the people and try to figure it out um, what happened and make sense of all of this together. But eventually I came to the conclusion that maybe we should turn the page and keep this awful election campaign in the past. Um, after all, this is not a country, we live in Canada. Uh, American will have to face uh, the consequence of their decision, not us. And then last Monday, I read on my uh, Facebook feed that Nazi symbols and racist graffiti were spray painted on a Canada elementary school in Bridal Bridalwood, not that far from this church. And the next day on Tuesday, similar graffitis and anti-Semitic slur were spray paint on the door of the home of a rabbi in the Dlib. And once again, on Thursday, the same happened on the wall of a synagogue in the Alta Vista um, neighborhood. On Friday, it was the turn of the Ottawa Mosque and Pardale United Church, and on Saturday morning, uh, the police arrested a young man when he was about to vandalize another Jewish community center. And all these events that happened in less than a week did not, did not occur in the United States, did not occur in the Middle East, but here in Ottawa, in our own city. Yes, they arrested a man, but I'm not naive or stupid. I'm convinced that extremist groups exist in the area. However, what I've been very disappointed is the initial reaction from our leaders after those events. Oh, beyond the message on Twitter, Facebook, press release by the Prime Minister, a few MPs, the mayor of of uh, Ottawa that denounced in the strongest terms these actions of hatred and they were standing in solidarity with the community affected, it took a lot of time before concrete action have been taken. In fact, it has, it's only Saturday when we saw them where there was media, of course. Well, maybe they really believe these were isolated incidents perpetrated by small numbers of deranged individuals. And still I wonder how many isolated incidents does it take before we should consider we might face something different, a real issue, before we do more than just speaking hollow words. As a Christian minister, as a citizen of this city, as a father of a child who is a visible minority and who is considered by the Kenyan government an immigrant, and as a decent human being, I was expecting more from my leaders. I know, I know, I know it's easy to criticize our leaders 
For some of us, it's almost our favorite pastime. It's just that when our society goes through a painful experience, when the economy does not perform as it should, when our way of life is somehow threatened, we're tempted to criticize a leader, to point finger at those who are running our city, our country, or churches. We get, begin to claim that they do not care enough about the little people like us. They're not taking, they're taking advantage of their position. They only serve their narrow interests. They have let us down. And this is not a new phenomenon. Oh, no. Today's reading from the book of Jeremiah begins with the words, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. And let, makes, let us make no mistake here. The prophet is not concerned with actual livestock or the real shepherds or the, the state of agriculture in ancient Israel. No, no. Jeremiah used a common metaphor uh, from that time, that area, that associated the duty of a king with the duty of a shepherd. And as the Israelites are going through a series of leadership crises, many of them, Jeremiah utters a cry of outrage against those who have abused power. The last few kings have failed to provide justice, safety, and holiness. They have failed to fulfill their covenantal duty to be good shepherds. They, have, they are the source of the struggle of God's people. However, says Jeremiah, the situation is not desperate. After criticizing harshly the leadership of his time, the prophet announces the coming of new leadership. He claims, I will rise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed or shall be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will rise up for David, a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king as, and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And for centuries, Christians from various denominations and origins have looked at this prophecy and said, ha ha, Jesus, this is Jesus, He's speaking about Jesus. Even if Jeremiah never used the language about messiahship uh, here or elsewhere in the book, this new shepherd cannot be anyone than Jesus the Christ, we say. After all, he is the king of kings, and he is the one we celebrate on this reign of Christ Sunday. Well, maybe, maybe the prophet Jeremiah foretold the coming of Christ Jesus, maybe. However, the text speaks of the coming of shepherds, not singular, plural, not one individual, but many of them. So since Jesus ought to be the good shepherd, who are those other shepherds who can shepherd people toward a safe home, provide a renewed sense of leadership, and bring justice and righteousness to the land? Well, maybe it's, maybe they are Jesus' disciple, the first apostle. That would make sense. Or the prophet and theologians of these, these times. Okay. Or maybe the great religious leader of the church. Maybe. But what if these shepherds were someone else? What if these shepherds were each and every one of us? And I can already hear some of you saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this sermon a subtle plot to get us sign up for work in the church, kind of? Because no way, no way. We're not doing this. No, 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 no. And if it's about actually changing our world, well, there's little we can do. 
Some would say, I wish I could bring justice, righteousness to everyone, but I'm not an elected official, I'm not a billionaire, I don't have a title, I'm not even a community leader. I'm just an ordinary person. I don't have any power. Nice try, Stefan, but, you know, <sighs> I don't have any power. That's what we often believe. That's what we have been told on many occasions. And yet, we all have power of some sort. Those who are lawyers and judges, for example, have power over the citizen who have broken the law. Those who are teachers have powers over the children and youth in their classes. Those who are employer have power over their employees. Parents and grandparents have power over their children and grandchildren. We all have some sort of power over other human beings. And power is not necessarily good or bad. It's a reality that we can choose to deny, to ignore, or to use, to have a positive impact in our world. Because there's a great amount of power in where we put our little X on our ballots. And the same can be said on where we buy our goods, the store we support, the charity we sustain, the value we transmit to children, the words we repeat or in public or not repeat in public, and so on. We can use this power at our disposal to make a difference. When some are trying to divide us, we can use our power and reach out to those we know less and bring to people together, even if it's not necessarily an easy task. When our collective fears lead some to, to response with hatred and violence, we can use our power to stand up and remind everyone around us about a person, the individual, the dignity of every people and human rights, even if we don't have the exact words to say it. When our elected officials are failing their duties to protect the outcast, the forgotten, the invisible, we can use our power and write letters or email asking them to reevaluate their decision even if we're not member of their party. When the poor, the marginalized, the strangers, the rejected have nowhere to go, we can open our doors and our arms, and our arms, even if we've never been told how to do it. We can be agent of change. We can be purveyor of hope. We can be source of goodness. We can be leaders in our own way. We can be good shepherds for God's people in our own way. Today's text from the book of Jeremiah brings up the question of our responsibility, our accountability in this world. Yes, we like to criticize our leaders when things, there does not, when things do not turn uh, out like we expect. And yes, it's easy to be cynical, to pretend we cannot change our society, to wait for the coming of a, a savior, a messiah that will fix everything. Yes, we can do that. However, in these challenging times that we experience these days, we ought to ask ourselves, what kind of leaders do we need? And most importantly, how can we be those leaders? So my friend, it's time. It's time to engage our social media, family, uh, school, working place, churches, and any other group we belong, and to tell them that another world is possible.
It's time to reach out to individuals and community. Uh, maybe we know less. Maybe like the LGBTQ community, Muslim, Jews, uh, immigrant, visible minority, and all of those who are scattered and vulnerable, feel vulnerable, and to work with them so we can create a society where all would be valued, all would be included. It's time for us to show leadership through our actions and our words and bring wholeness, holiness, justice and righteousness in our world, in our country, in our own city. It's time to be, in our own way, the Good Shepherds announced by the prophet Jeremiah. Amen. <laughs>